All right, so we want to prove um, this first uh, limit rigorously. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a series of steps to follow. And, you know, you can change it. The most important thing that um, you do is you have to make sure that every step follows logically from the one before it. Um, but there are variations of the same theme. So um, the first thing you should do is set up um, what you know. So you want to set up um, f of x minus l is less than epsilon and uh, x minus c is less than delta. Okay, so uh, let's do that. Um, so we know that, uh, or we we want four x minus seven uh, minus l, so minus five, to be less than epsilon. Okay, so this is what we want. Remember, and we know. that um, x minus c or x minus 3 is less than delta. Okay, so remember that you're trying to satisfy this. This is what you want and this is your tool. This is what you know. So um, your second step is to um, you're going to do some algebra do algebra uh, to to get uh, this x minus uh, c to appear in f of x minus l so um, if I go back to my f of x minus l this is for x minus 12 which is if you factor out a 4 notice this is equal to 4 times x minus 3 okay and then remember the great thing is that um, you have control over x minus 3 okay so now step 3 is um, it's I'm going to leave step three here, um, but step three is only going to be necessary if you don't have a constant times your x minus c. So if, like in this case, we have a constant times x minus c, then we skip step three. Um, but if we don't have a constant, if we have other variables, then we have to bound um, I'm just going to say bound other uh, factors, bound other factors uh, besides x minus c. So on the next example we'll do, um, we'll uh, take this into effect. But here in this case, this is the simplest case. In this case, we're going to skip because we don't need to bound it. And this will be more clear later when we do some of the harder problems. Uh, but for now, we'll just we'll just leave it at leave that one at that. Now, step four is going to be um, to uh, find what you want to do is you want to find your delta by solving um, for x minus c in f of x minus l is less than epsilon. What you're trying to do in this step is you're trying to figure out what you want delta to be. Remember, you get to choose delta. So what you do is you go back to this one that you just had for x minus 3 so this is f of x minus l 
is less than epsilon. So you're not stating this as fact, you're using this because you want to solve for x minus c. Well, that's easy enough. x minus c, or x minus 3 in this case, is going to be less than epsilon over 4. And this, this is your fifth step. You're going to be, you're going to choose delta to be equal to uh, that value from before. So delta to be equal to uh, value, I'm just going to write value from step four. So delta, I'm going to choose delta to equal to epsilon over four. So choose delta to equal to epsilon over 4 from this one that was back here. So the only reason why you do step 4 is to figure out what you need delta to be. Okay, so then remember what the definition said is that you're trying to prove that this is what you're trying to prove that if x minus 3 is less than delta, then f of x minus l is less than epsilon. And so step 6 is going to be to use x minus c is less than delta to prove f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Okay, so it goes like this. Since delta is equal to epsilon over 4, then x minus 3 is less than epsilon over 4, right? This is in the definition. So what that means is that 4 times x minus 3, which is f of x minus l, is less than 4 times epsilon over 4. Now essentially what you're doing is you're substituting this guy in for this but with the less than condition. So because x minus 3 is less than epsilon over 4, then that means that 4 times x minus 3 is less than 4 times epsilon over 4, right? Okay, well what's this equal to though? This is equal to epsilon. So what you've shown then is that f of x minus l, which is this guy, f of x minus l is less than, less than, now here when you say equal to, you're talking only about the one right before it, but it's still this guy this guy right here is less than epsilon. So then you've done, you've proved it. So let's go back through again to see if we, if that makes sense. Step one, you set up f of x minus l and x minus c. Step two, you try to write f of x minus l so that you have x minus c inside of it. That's why we factor it out of four. Step three, we skip for this one, but we'll do one in the next one. Step four, step four is to find what delta is going to be by solving for x minus c in f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Okay, once you do that, you choose delta to be that value. Once you do that, then what that means is that 
you use um, x minus c, which is less than that value of delta, to prove it. So then you go x minus c is less than epsilon over 4, which means that f of x minus l, which is 4 times x minus 3, is less than 4 times epsilon over 4. Simple substitution here with the less than. And this is equal to epsilon, which means that f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So it has to follow logically from the beginning to the end.